Okay, so I continue to draw the one that's on your bottom. Um, this is the bird's eye view because you can see the top of it. It's like you're floating above it and looking down below. So notice that I started with the corner. I took the right side to the right vanishing point. I took the left side to the left vanishing point. And then I took this part back to the right side. So if you ever need to, you can pause this as you go. Don't feel like you have to keep up with me. Pause and replay, pause and rewind. Do whatever you need to to be able to get this done. For each of these boxes, we're going to go ahead and add another box. So boxes on boxes to make it taller. So I'm going to go ahead and add another corner and take the right side to the right vanishing point and decide how far I want this to go. Take the left side to the left vanishing point. Right. So it looks like it's kind of like a step pyramid at this point. I could keep doing this if I really wanted to. but I'll stop at three, okay? We can also add something to a side if we want different ways you can go about doing this. For this one, I want it to look like it's attaching right next to it, maybe like it's a locker bank like in our school or something like that, or a shed. So I'm gonna use a vertical line. Then I'm gonna actually have it come out from the building. So it's gonna come out from the building and I'm gonna keep it pretty much the same distance on the top. So what I basically just did is instead of starting with the corner, right, like I normally do where I'd start here or here, I started where it lines up completely next to the building so that it would line up perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and take the top of it to the left vanishing point. Then I'm going to take this part here goes to the right, so this back part also must go to the right. Actually, let's see here. Let's have this look like it butts up right to the edge of the building there. So I'm going to take that to the right vanishing point. Right, and so then here is vertical, so this must be vertical. So if you're like me and you ever draw it too short, just go ahead and go back and then add a little bit more. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is, so we did the side, we did the top, let's do a bottom. So let's go ahead and add a vertical line to this one. So I'm going to take the right side to the right. I'm going to make it skinny like it's a chimney on in reverse. tube coming down and take this side to the left and then this is looking pretty flat notice how it's really close to the horizon I'm still gonna line up to the opposite corners so I can see just a little bit of the thickness on the underside of it okay so that's adding boxes on top of boxes. Now we can go ahead and look at doing different kinds of roofs. Let's go ahead and put a peaked roof or a gabled roof on this building right down here. So what I'm going to have to do is find the middle. And if you remember from one point perspective, the easiest way to find the middle isn't to measure it like this, because remember things get smaller as they get farther away, but it's to find the middle by using an X. So I'm going to take one side of it, I'm going to draw lightly, 
I'm going to use a vertical line so I can align my peak. And you decide how high you want that peak to go. And so then I'm going to take this part here and I'm going to draw a diagonal line that doesn't actually go to my vanishing point. So I'm going to go diagonal to diagonal. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I have to think about which direction of line am I going to use. Am I going to take it to the right, to the left? Can you see how these are all going to the left? So this peak here is also going to have to go to the left. Okay. To get this back side of the roof, all I do is take my ruler and I slide it back to the corner and I keep it at the same angle and I go like that. So I just slide, keep it parallel, go back. I do the same thing for this side. Okay. You can get rid of any extra lines that you may have. I'm just going to lightly erase the X so that you remember that's how we did it. Um, on this one, above the horizon, I'm going to do like a, just a slab on the top. A lot of industrial buildings have um, cornices at the top. And so what I'm going to have us do here is I'm going to have us draw a little slab kind of hovering above. And it can be shifted to the left or the right. I'm actually going to shift it just a little bit more here so that you can see it. Okay. And then I'm going to make it really, really skinny. So I'm going to shift it to, or take it to the right side. And I'm going to have it come off of the building ever so slightly. And I'm going to take it to the left side. Do the same thing, have it come off the edge. And then for this one, I'm going to use a vertical line to make it stop. And then it's floating above right now. So what I want to go ahead and do is I want to connect it back to the building. So if this is going to the left, the only way I can connect it back wouldn't be vertical. It would be going to the opposite vanishing point. So sometimes if you didn't draw this too long, it's going to come in above it. Just make sure it comes in underneath this bottom or this top edge of the building. So I'm going to take it to the opposite. So it looks like it has this little ledge coming off. The next thing we're going to try is truncation. We're going to take out a section of this building at the very top. So it's kind of like the top of a castle wall. I'm going to go ahead and draw myself some vertical lines. Notice how I made this space bigger than this one because of course this would be getting smaller because it's getting farther away. I'm going to take this part and go to the left because this top is also going to the left, so a bottom one as well. Okay, I'm going to erase it, look like there's a part taken out of it, and then I'm going to go ahead and draw to the opposite vanishing point. Now I could have this keep running back if I wanted to, or I could use a vertical line to have it stop. So I could see both the left and the right side of it at one time. Let's try that again on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and draw two vertical lines. I'm going to take this edge to the right since the top is going to the right. Go ahead and erase. Right now it's kind of like paper thin. So I'm going to have to take it to the opposite vanishing point. So this part here is one, right? We only see one side of it. Here we see two. So I'm going to attach it here this time. I'll just go ahead and like this and have it stop. So that's called truncation where you take a part out of it. So in perspective we normally start with big shapes right and then we start to add smaller and smaller details. The next thing that you'd probably want to do is to work on like doors or windows. And so there's a few different kinds that we can go through. Let's go ahead and just do a door that's actually on a building. 
So let's go ahead and make a door. So we would have it be vertical. And then the top of it would be parallel to the top of the roof or the top of the building. So we're going to go to the right side and just make ourselves like a tall skinny one. And you can make this as decorative as you want by adding door, you know, windows and a doorknob and so on. You could also create a doorway that is possibly like in a department store. So it's maybe a little bit bigger. I'll go ahead and make this a little larger here and take the top of it to the right side since it's on the right. And let's say we're walking on a sidewalk and we want to go into this building. How can I make it look like it's going in? We're going to use that same technique we did for the truncation. I'm going to go ahead and draw to the left vanishing point. Okay. Then I'm going to take this part to the right. Okay. So this is like maybe a window, this is a window, this is actually where the door is. So here I'm going to go ahead and add myself like a little bit of a frame so that you can tell that this is the door. So this is like your floor, so I can even maybe get rid of that. All right. So I'd walk through here, this is where I could see merchandise, I could see merchandise in these windows. So we can actually go ahead and do that too if we wanted to. We could add windows to this side. Oh, went to the wrong vanishing point. Right? Because it's on the right side, it's got to go to the right vanishing point. Line the foundation up here for this window. Let's go ahead and do a couple more windows. I want to make four perfect windows. So I'm going to use vertical lines. Right? If I want them to be perfect, I'm going to go ahead and find the middle. And that gives me two perfect windows. If I want to find the middle of that, In the middle of that. Find the middle of this section. Can you see how these windows are getting smaller and smaller and smaller as they go back into the distance? If I wanted to make this whole side look like it was glass, like maybe like a, a skyscraper, what I would do is maybe make a bunch of tick marks, have these get closer and closer as they get closer to our vanishing point, right? And take vertical lines down from there. Right? So notice how I can also make them look like they're getting closer. I don't always have to find the middle. That really only works for multiples of four, like two, four, 16. And then I would make these equal. So I maybe use some tick marks going down here. It's always easier to, if this is possible, on an edge before you draw a bunch of lines. And then draw them back to that left vanishing point. So this is like how we did the checkerboard in one point perspective, right? But this is like, oh, this building is made by a bunch of glass windows. The last thing I would do is add surface, so like bricks. So if you wanted to do bricks, I would do the same thing. I would add little tick marks going down the side. Then I would take going back to the vanishing point. OK, 
okay? And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make these bricks look like they're getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer as they go around. So what I do is I do one row and then I'll do all the other ones going every other. Just have to be real careful to keep them in the right way. Like in the right row. Right. So you can continue that. And then in the opposite one, so this is like the A row, the B row, I'm going to go ahead about halfway and do tick marks there so that they look like they're staggered, just like bricks and other masonry, soft and staggered. I could show you some more stuff, but I think that that's probably good enough. You can always refer to the packet if you want to learn how to make things like window, or excuse me, sidewalk, balconies. Um, what else do I have? I have how to do open doors, very similar to one point perspective. Um, I also have canopies um, if you want to get all fancy.